Hello, welcome to my channel, The Hebrew Bible. This is Moses Gumadi, and in this video, we'll look at the angel of the Lord, Malach Adonai, part two, uh, talking to Abraham. In the previous episode, we've looked at uh, the angel of the Lord talking to Hagar. Today, it will be Abraham in Genesis chapter 22. Let's begin reading from verses 10 onwards. We read here, Vaishlak Avraham eth yado, vaikach eth hamaacheleth, that's the knife, lishkot eth beno, vaikra elav, malach adonai min hashamayim, vayomer, Avraham, Avraham, vayomer hineni. So, Abraham took the knife, he sent the knife, it says, Vaishlak Abraham, he sent the knife uh, with his hand upon and uh, and took uh, the knife. Well, he sent his hand uh, and took the knife, right, uh, to, well, to slay his son. Lichot, lishot, et beno, to slay or to kill his son. And vaikra elav malach adonai. And to him called out, who called out Malach Adonai, the angel of the Lord, angel of Yodhevah, called unto him Min Hashamayim out of heaven. And he said, Vayomer means, and he said, Abraham, 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 Vayomer. And he said, that is Abraham, he replied, Hineni. Hineni means here I am, or behold, I am, behold me, Hineni, behold me, or here I am. So, what did he say? Vayomer, altishlak yadecha, don't send forth your hand, elha nahar, upon the child, ve alta aselo, Ve alta aslo, don't do anything. Me umam, me umma, anything. This is the anything. Alta as, do not uh, make anything to him. Anything, the anything is here. Ki ata yadati ki yere Elohim ata. I know that. By this I, have, I know that you fear God. Now there are two interesting words here. Ata, Ain Tau He, and Aleph Tau He. Ata, Ata. So they sound about just the same, but this means now, Ain Tau He, Ata, and Ata. This is uh, you. So here in English, uh, for now I know, this now is Atta and, uh, um, and you, thou, is Atta. Velo hasachta, that is you have not withheld, et bincha, your son, et yechidcha, your only son, uh, your, uh, your, only, your only one, yechid, that is the one you have him as alone, like only son, mimeni, from me. Okay, right, that's what he said. And, Vayissa Avraham eth enav, so Nasa is the verb, Vayissa, that is, and Abraham lifted up. What? Enav, so that is his eyes. Vayar vehinne and looked and behold, Ail, a ram. A ram is a, uh, is like a a sheep, a male sheep. Vehinne, uh, Ail, Achad, one ram was there. It was caught uh, in a thicket by his horns. Bekarnav, Karen. In one of my earlier videos, we talked about this word keren, which means uh, horn. Karnaim means horns, horns of Moses. 
Well, he didn't have horns. Uh, the Karen or the uh, rays shot forth out of uh, his face. Uh, and so that's what we looked at. Horns of Moses in one of the videos, earlier videos. Look, look at it if you'd like to see. Bekarnav. The ending with the vow, this is a pronominal suffix and that means his. So he found the angel of the Lord stopped Abraham, right? And he said, well, by this, I know that you fear God. And then Abraham lift, lifted up and looked up. And we read here that uh, uh, he saw a ram caught in a bush, a thicket by his horns. And Abraham went and took it and he offered it. It is Vaikah, Lachach means to to take. Vaikah means he has taken. He took Etha'ail, so that ram, he took it. Vaya'alehu, he offered it. Le'ola, so the word Ola means to offer it up, upwards. Um, you know, the word Ma'ala, means where ma mem ayn lamed he ma'ala means steps or steps of ascent so ola is a burnt offering but uh, there is no burning or offering etc the, the corresponding words are not there directly ola is understood to be burnt offering because it goes up so vaya alehu le ola means he the, the same word, the noun, this ola, uh, is used as a verb here. Ain lamed he. Vaya alehu. So this is in the vayiktol uh, form of the verb. Vaya alehu le ola. Tachath beno. That is instead of his son. Literally, if you want to say tachath means underneath the son. Meaning in place of his son. Okay. He offered the ayil or ram. Now, after this happened, what, what happened? Vayikra Abraham Shem Hamakom Hahu Adonai Ire Asher Ye Amer Hayom Behar Adonai Yerae. Look at this very interesting verse. Jehovah Jireh is a very familiar um, you know, phrase, the title of God. People use it in singing, you know, in Christian songs and hymn, well, choruses. Jehovah Jireh, my provider, his grace is sufficient for me. Okay, that's the that's what it is. Here, Adonai, Yir A, or Jehovah, Yir A. We'll look, at, we'll look into this, but look at this word here. Yodresh Aleph He, Yodresh Aleph He, the vowels are slightly different. Ignore the cantillation, right? So he is a yir e yera e. Yir e yera e. So yir e means he shall see. Adonai shall see. That is in the yiktol format, he shall see. Future tense or imperfect tense. This one, yera e, it's the same t tense, but uh, you know, it is in the nifal, meaning it's in the uh, it, it, it's in the it's in the passive sense. So let's look at this. Adonai yir a. The Lord shall see. He shall see. That's the meaning. But the same word with slightly different vowels. Yera a. Yera a means he shall be seen. He shall be seen. So let's go back. And Abraham called the name of the that place Adonai Ir E Yehova Ir E, not Jaira. So there is no Jaira. Yehova Ir E. That's the vowels here. And as it is said to this day, in the mountain of the Lord, it is not it. <clears throat> you can say it and what shall be seen. This is in the masculine, actually, this verb. In the mountain of the Lord, he shall be seen. Who? He. The Lord. Or perhaps the Lord's uh, angel. Or the Lord's deliverance. Or the Lord's hand. 
the Lord's word, the Lord's, uh, well, um, in, in, in interfer like inter intervention will be seen. Adonai yir e, the Lord, he shall see, and here he shall be seen. Very interestingly, the same concept we have read in the previous video on the same subject about the angel of the Lord when Hagar, right? This is what she said to the angel of the Lord. She says, and she called the name of Adonai that spake unto her, Thou God seest me, thou God art the one who sees me. And here, and the next phrase also is similar. Ki amra hagam halim, well, sorry, hamra hagam halom. This is a cantillation. People could confuse it to be the chirik. There is no lim. This is a cantillation. Okay. Halom, raithi achre roi. So I have also seen after him that sees me. Or I have also seen him after he has seen me. You can say like that. So essentially, El Roi, God who sees and have seen. This is the same idea. Adonai Yir E and other uh, here Yera E. Yera E. Behar Adonai, Behar Adonai Yera E. In the mountain of the Lord it shall be seen, or he shall be seen, Yera E. And she says El Roi, and here Roi, the same meaning. Uh, I also have seen him that after uh, he has seen me. You can say like that. El Roi, God who sees me. Or God who is seen. Both ways you can translate that phrase El Rohi. Adonai Yir E is what we have learned today. Now, if you would like to read the way we are reading El Rohi or let's say Yera E and Yir E, how do you read? You need to know the letters, you need to know the vowels and only when you know the vowels you'll be able to distinguish, distinguish between yir a and yara a and all that stuff and the best thing to do it really is to learn the alphabet okay memorize the alphabet you should be able to if i show you a card like this um you should be able to quickly recognize and say hey what is this oh this is beth oh this is a uh, face of faith right and on the back of the card you can see whether you have uh, guessed it correctly or not. And so really these, these type of cards can be of great help for somebody who is going to learn, who wants to learn Hebrew alphabet and vowels. There are 54 cards in this particular pack. If you'd like to get one, please look below in the description. You can get one uh, from that link. Right, so let's proceed to the next verse. What happened after the Lord stopped Abraham and Abraham went and saw, he saw the uh, Ayil, which is the ram, and he offered it as a burnt offering in, in, the, stay, in the place of his son. And then further on, what happened? And Abraham, of course, called that place Adonai Yir E, Yehovah Yir E. And we read when he said that, the angel of the Lord comes back again. Vaikram Malach Adonai El Avraham Shenit Min Hashamayim. Second time, Shenit. Second time, Min Hashamayim, that is from heaven. Who is calling? Malach Adonai. Malach Adonai called out to Abraham. Vayomer, Vi Nishbaati Neum Adonai. I have sworn in myself or by myself. By myself have I sworn, Neum Adonai, saith the Lord. So by bringing in this clause, somehow the angel of the Lord is not identifying himself with the rest of the text in which 
uh, the speech is spoken in the first person. So if he says, because you have done this thing, etc. And then the next verse, therefore, I will bless and I will multiply, etc. That I, to whom does it refer to? Does it refer to the Lord or does it refer to the Malacha Donai or to the angel of the Lord? Previously, we have uh, said that when Hagar saw uh, the angel of the Lord, later on, it, it says that she called the name of the Lord who has seen her. Um, it says El Roi. Uh, here again, so there, there was an indication in the previous uh, instance uh, that uh, the Lord, the angel of the Lord is indeed the Lord himself, but not quite. He is and he is not. Okay, so you have both of these things happening. So essentially what is happening is uh, there are various traditions, of course. So the point, though, is that the angel of the Lord is a sort of a representative of God and he appears and speaks in many places as though he himself is Adonai. Uh, so he speaks in the first person. Uh, the Lord himself, of course, is infinite. And so when he manifests himself as a finite uh, being, um, most of the times he's called Malach Adonai. Uh, so sometimes he speaks as himself and says, I, but sometimes he also says, the Lord has said, Neum Adonai. The, the, that's why I'm trying to point out this blue portion. So here we read, Vayomer bi nishbaati, that is, I, I have uh, sw uh, sworn by myself, Neum, said the Lord, Neum Adonai, ki ya'an asher asita et haddavar haze, velo chasafta et bincha et yechidcha. Because you have done this thing, this particular thing, and you have not withholden or withheld your son or your only son. Or your only one, your only son, of course, the son is just a uh, redundant here. Yahid, your only one. Well, that's what it means, only son, of course. And what did he say? Ki varech avarech, ki varech avarech ha, avarech ha. So there are two cuffs, a cuff and cuffs of it both without the Dagesh. So, Avarech Ha, Avarech Ha, Varech Ki Varech Avarech Ha, Veharba Arbe. Look at these words. Barach is the word to bless. Varech Avarech Ha means blessing, I will bless thee. Harba Arbe means I will multiplying, I will multiply, right? Multiplying, I will multiply, meaning, so it is a sort of an intensive thing. Two different verbs in two conjugations. One is hefil and the other is yiktol. Et zaraha, zara, zara means seed, zaraha means thy seed, because I will, I will multiply, I bless your seed and multiply your seed Ke kochave, ke that is kochav means stars. So kochave, ke kochave means uh, like the stars. So you have kaf, kaf, kaf. There are three kafs and there is a beth. Sometimes people might confuse the beth to kaf or kaf to beth. You see, all of these letters are very similar. Ke kochave. That's how you pronounce. Ke choch ve. Ke choch ve. Because this is Shava. So you just end the syllable here. Okay. Hashamayim, that is the stars of heaven, uh, etc. Right? And they will possess the, the gate of the enemies. I will bless your seed like the stars of heaven. Sha'ar oivau means his um, gate of the enemies he shall possess. Okay, and then further on he says, Vehit Barahu, Vehit Barahu, Bezarach, Bezaracha. If you say Bezarach, then it becomes a feminine ending, but you have a Kamats here, Bezaracha, 
that is your seed that is masculine uh, pronominal suffix that is your is thy is a masculine in english you see when the, this word you and your you don't know if the you refers to a female or a male whereas in hebrew it's a gendered language so all these pronoun, pronouns and pronominal suffixes verbs and nouns they all are in either masculine or feminine so you can clearly figure out sometimes when there is a you uh, and then in the next sentence and something is referred to them you can figure out whether this particular verb is uh, pointing to the female person mentioned earlier or the male person mentioned earlier so that sort of a linking it is easier to do in hebrew whereas in english we can sometimes make mistakes okay vehith barhu bezaracha kol goe haaretz all the nations of the earth so what is he saying? All the nations of the earth shall be blessed, is what we read here in the text. I have added in the brackets, bless themselves. Vehith barahu. So hith pa'el is the uh, conju uh, conjugation. Or you can say stem. Kal, not conjugation, it's a stem. So in the Hebrew verbs, there are seven stems. Kal, nifal, piel, pu'al. Uh, hifil hofal hithpael. Hithpael is the last stem that is a reflexive, meaning um, the, per the person who is taking the action and the person upon whom the action is being taken, that is the, both the subject and the object, are the same. Therefore, that verb or the action is reflexive. That is, um, you saying to oneself or you know, um, so self-reflexive action. So hith barhu means bless the bless themselves. Why it is themselves in plural? Because it ends with a hu, a u. Um, so that's the reason. Okay, hith barhu. So or in thee, in thy seed, that in the seed of Abraham, bezaracha, in your seed, all the nations of the earth shall bless themselves. It's a very interesting way of saying it. Bless themselves. I mean, there is a bit of a an action that they themselves need to do in order to bless themselves, right? <laughs> in his seed, they shall bless themselves. Because you have obeyed my vo voice. Ekel asher shemata bekoli. Kol means voice. Kof yod lamed. Here, of course, Yod is gone. There is a Cholam on the top. Uh, ek, ekev is, you know, you remember the word Yaakov? Yaakov is Jacob. That's the same word here. Ekev means heal. But why is saying heal and is translated as because? Well, heal is, heal is at the end of the, uh, of the person. So heal is the consequence, you can say, uh, of the head, meaning the head thinks and the heel walks and the heel steps. So uh, so the outcome. Uh, so that's the reason he's saying because. So the word is used in the sense of because, because, well, the root word means heel. It's, it's very interesting in Hebrew the way it is done. Okay, so that, that brings us to the end of this video. I'm sure you like this video. Please do like it on YouTube and subscribe to my channel. Uh, and click the bell icon, please, uh, because of it, uh, which I think uh, also comment, make uh, your comments um, that will bring more traffic uh, because of the YouTube algorithm. I'll be really grateful if you do that. Uh, and if you could even forward it to your friends, that will be helpful. And we want to do more of these videos in the coming days. And I shall endeavor to do so. Thank you very much. I will see you again soon. Thank you.